Hello and welcome to another video. I chose this question because I want you to know that for you to find the area between two curves or several curves, you have to know what the area looks like. You have to be able to sketch every single curve involved or every single function involved in the area you're trying to calculate. So if you don't know how to sketch a function, um, do not tell yourself you know how to find the area between any two functions because you seeing the picture tells you what function is on top and which one is under. Otherwise, you'll just be guessing and it will be more like a trial and error kind of thing. Okay, so here I have one of the simplest trig functions in the world. Well, there are not many of them, but you got sine x, you've got cosine x, you have the line x equals zero and the line x equals two pi. And those are all you have but want to know the area between all of these things. So remember, step one is you must know how to sketch all the functions that are involved. Okay, so let's start. So my first move is gonna be the line I mean sine of x, okay, the graph of sine x, so it's better that you just create. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this the middle, which is pi, and then I'm going to call this the end, which is pi to pi. So in here, I'm going to have pi over 2, here I'm going to have 3 pi over 2, okay? Um, is there anything else I could do? I think I could even make this smaller and make this pi over 4 and then I'm just gonna count that way pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. So now I have 8 sections that I am gonna pay attention to. So I'm gonna sketch the curve. Let's sketch uh, for sine. I know sine attains the maximum value so this is 1 and let's call this minus one so the maximum for sine is here and this at this point it is zero it starts from zero at this point it gives me my negative one is here and i get my zero back i'm going to use a different color so this is the graph of sine it goes up boom 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 cha it ends here Okay, that's from zero to two pi, okay? That's why I went that way. Whether you're supposed to go that way or not, just sketch it, okay? Then you can restrict yourself to the regions you're talking about. Now, the second one is for cosine. What happens with cosine? Well, we know cosine starts from one. It starts from here, and then we know that cosine pi over two is zero, and then we know that cosine pi is negative one, so it's gonna be somewhere here for cosine pi and then we know that here we're going to come back to zero and here it's going to be positive one the same height as this one so so we use another color and what we're going to get is this comes this way boom 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 you see that so this is what you get. Now the question is saying the area bounded. So we're looking for the parts on the inside. We're looking for these portions. What's the area of this and this? You see that? And this. So we keep looking for these areas until we get to this point. So like that. That's the meaning of this graph. If this was an area, what would be the area? <clears throat> okay, so now, for you to take this kind of uh, calculation, you must know which one is on top and which one is under. Because in order to find the, let's say we're doing Riemann sums, in order to find the area of each rectangle, you must know the height. And the height is from bottom to top. So you must know which one is at the bottom, which one is on top. 
for each section. So the formula you use for the let for this first part will be different because as you can see the first part has the red line which is the cosine is on top of the sine which means you're doing cosine minus sine but as soon as you cross this line which means you must know this point okay as soon as you cross this line it becomes sine minus cosine as soon as you cross this line it becomes cosine minus sine so if we look at what we have in this region when you're doing your formula okay it's from here at this point all you're doing is cosine minus sine okay cosine cosine x minus sine x from here to here what you're doing will be the blue one which is sine x minus cosine x and here what you're doing is cosine x minus sine x and you know what the boundaries are well the boundary for this is 5 pi over 4 to 2 pi the boundary here is from this point. Wow, it's a far distance. This is from pi over four. Okay, all the way here, that's what you're gonna be using. Let's move this to the back a little bit. Okay, this is tiny, so we're gonna write it vertically. Okay, we just do it this way. So this is from zero to this point is gonna be um, cosine x minus sine x. Okay, and then from here. So that's all you have to be able to do. From here on, you can just do, you take your integral. Remember, the integral is you take the boundaries and you use this function, cosine x minus sine x, and that's it. Okay, so what's the relevance of these two points? Well, it tells us where we're going to start and where we're going to stop. If this was changed to pi, it means you're going to stop here. If it was changed to whatever they change it to, that's where you stop. But this is the entire um, single one period. So I, I took a, a complete cycle of uh, both functions, and that's what we're going to do. So let's just take the integral and get our answer. So let's write the formula here because it's easy. So the area bounded in this case will be equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of what's the function? It's going to be cosine x minus sine x dx. And we're going to add it to what we get here. It's going to be again the integral, but now the interval is from pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4, pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4 of, now it is sine x minus cosine x dx, okay? And the third one, oh, no space. Okay, we just put the third one here. It's going to be plus, you have the integral from 5 pi over 4 to 2 pi of cosine x minus sine x dx, okay? So we've got these three portions, and that's where our math is going to be. So let's do it. A will be equal to, um, if we take the integral, let's rewrite it. So it's going to be the integral pi over 4. This is from 0 to pi over 4 of cosine x minus sine x. Oh, I remember another reason. Another reason I picked this question is because of the changing uh, boundaries and the changing signs when you take your integrals. You have to be very careful when you do this. Okay, I'm gonna show you my way of just ensuring that I don't make a mistake. Okay, so here we go. And this is gonna be plus, the second part is the integral from pi over four to five pi over four of, now we switch, it's gonna be sine x minus cosine x dx. Okay, plus the integral from 5 pi over 4 to 2 pi of cosine x minus sine x dx. Okay, so let's take the integral. If we integrate this function, the integral of cosine is sine. Okay, so it's sine x. So remember that minus the integral of sine x is negative cosine. So instead of writing negative, negative cosine, I'm just gonna change this to plus cosine x. And I'm evaluating from zero to pi over four. Plus, I'll go to the next one. It's gonna be the integral. So here, remember now I know that the integral of sine x is negative cosine. So I'm just gonna write negative cosine x. And then the integral of cosine is sine, okay? Minus sine x. And this evaluates from pi over 4 
to 5 pi over 4 plus. And then we take the next one, which is the last one. It's just a repeat of this. So don't bother yourself. Just go here and copy. It's going to be sine x uh, plus cosine x evaluated from 5 pi over 4 to 2 pi. Okay, now let's evaluate. Now, assuming you didn't know what to do, whether it's positive or negative, just go back to the graph. Notice this, that when you are within the first range, the values of the red graph, which is cosine, and the blue graph are both above the x-axis, so both of them will be positive, okay? So, here, we know that this is, if I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use pi over four, yeah, this is pi over four. They have the same value, which we know is root two over two. So if you don't have your um, unit circle memorized, this is gonna be a problem, because you need to know what sine pi, pi over four is and cosine pi over four. They're both positive and they are rad two over two. So that's what I'm gonna write here. So this is equal to um, rad two over two. So here it's gonna be a lot of work, rad two, over two plus rad two over two. So I plugged in this into both, and now I'm gonna subtract, if I plug in zero, if I plug in zero here, it's gonna be zero plus, if I plug in zero here, it's gonna be one. Okay, done with the first part. So I do the second part, it's gonna be negative, or oh, I can factor out this negative actually, you know, this out so that this will be equal to cosine x plus sine x. It's just gonna be something like this. And we're gonna put those values in. Okay, so let's put in the values. Remember, we have factored out, so I can actually change this minus, and then this is cosine plus, okay? <laughs> because that's easier to deal with. Now, if I put this in, this is gonna be negative, so that's negative rad two over two. If I plug this in, this is gonna be negative also, negative rad two over two, okay? Minus, if I plug this in, this is gonna be positive rad two over two, and this is gonna be positive rad two over two, plus rad two over two, okay? Plus, and the final one. Let's close this up. We're gonna clean up maybe next two lines. Okay, here we're gonna have 2 pi, sine 2 pi is 0, so let's do 0 plus cosine 2 pi is 1, minus um, sine rad 2 over, sine 5 pi over 4 is going to be negative rad 2 over 2, and then plus the same thing, negative rad 2 over 2. Okay, so let's clean everything up. This is going to be rad, half rad 2 plus, this is just rad 2. Okay, minus one. That's what we have here. Minus, this is gonna be minus half rad two, minus half rad two, that's minus rad two. Okay, it's looking nicer. Minus, this is gonna be rad two. Huh, interesting. And this is gonna be plus one minus, hey, this minus is here. We gotta put, um, so this is this, and this goes here. Okay. Yes, this is one minus uh, rad two. Is this minus? That's gonna be plus, okay? It's gonna be one minus, let's put it this way, one minus negative rad two. Okay, and that's what we've got. So one more cleanup. This is rad two minus one plus rad two plus rad two plus one plus rad two. Oh, interesting. Uh, what do we have? This negative cancels out this negative. So you have rad two plus rad two plus rad two plus rad two. Whoa, it's four rad two. And this is the area between sine x and cosine x for one complete cycle. Yeah, I know. This could be the most confusing part, but remember, you need to identify the correct boundaries for you to switch between which is positive or which is negative. If you just stay consistently putting sine minus cosine, your answer will not be correct.
unless you are very lucky. And we don't do luck. We never stop learning. Because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.